With all of the technology these days, do you know enough to keep your child safe? What to look out for and ways for you to get educated so you can be a cyber savvy parent. Plus, we've been talking about the upcoming London Games, but did you know you can participate in your Olympics right here on Delmarva? We'll tell you where and how coming up. And the guessing game continues this afternoon. Where am I on Delmarva? Well, I know, but you have to try and figure it out. Plenty of clues coming up. And giving back to your community how you can help make a difference in the lives of your neighbors. Delmarva Life starts right now. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lisa Bryan. I'm Jimmy Hoppe. Welcome to Delmarva Life from Historic Studio D. And we would love to welcome our studio audience today. Give them a round of applause. Give us, give yourself. Let's give them a, yes. <laughs> we will clap for you. How about that? Oh, I, you notice I wore a sweater today? What is with that? Yeah, well, you know, it's cold outside. It, it's so bitterly cold, <laughs> so many degrees below 110, 120. Com compared to Saturday, today oh, is just wonderful. I, I could do without the humidity, but I, I am not going to complain. Well, yeah, it's true. I mean, I'll take the 80s over the yeah, uh, triple digits anyway. Apparently, the meteorologists are saying that with the humidity that we're having, it's feeling almost as hot as it did, Yeah. only more sticky. but. Oh, the thunderstorms that came through. Did you I lose know. any power? Um, no, we didn't. And we really didn't get hit by a lot of, uh, the storms kind of went around us, but right. we saw the lightning. The lightning the Sunday night was show. amazing. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Terrific. Okay, so I'm sorry. Let's back up. Let's go back to Saturday. Yeah. Because that is one of our hot topics. The Del Marble Live Canoe Joust team had a had a great time over the weekend. Oh, we had a large time and we found a great way to stay cool. There we are. We were, that's the Delmarva Lifers. That's what we called ourselves in the canoe joust down in uh, Snow Hill on the Pocomoke River. That is Brian Spiros. He was our, our jouster, I guess you could say, as me and my, um, and my daughter. Uh -huh. She's in the canoe with me. Um, we, we canoed him out there, and this is, this is what happened. That's my daughter screaming, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and and that, okay, oh. now look at that. Brian okay. went in the water. Right. So we thought we lost, right? Over and done with. We did not lose. We really? won that round because you didn't, you probably didn't see it that the person in the other canoe, the other jouster, had yeah. actually um, stepped off the platform. Stepped off the platform. He went back, his foot went into the bottom of the canoe. So we won that so one. So you're in there first yeah, round. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it was double elimination. So we went out again. That one, um, we got dumped, the whole canoe. Went that was over. an interesting feeling. It was a nice feeling with the 100 degree <laughs> weather. And then um, for our second elimination, um, my daughter was the jouster. Yeah. And she stayed up there for a while, but eventually she fell. But we had such a good time. A lot of money was raised for the Snow Hill Fire Department. Wonderful people. Thank you guys so much for inviting us to come down and take part in this. We are going to take part in this again. You are going to be there next year. Yeah, I had to bail out of it this time. I want to be a part of that. Yeah. Only, see, what I'm afraid of is he was sitting down going out of the platform. I can't imagine me standing up. <laughs> oh, you gotta, and I'll go over. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you would be a good jouster just because... Um, so I'll stay in there. Too top heavy. You're, you're too... Yeah, you gotta have kind of you know that low center gravity thing going because it's 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 you know when you go like when you're jousting right. you lose your balance. That was so. a really nice way of saying I'm too top heavy. <laughs> um, do you like to surf fish? I like to fish out in the creeks and in rivers and things. I, like that. My husband does, but I don't. Like mm. Well, if you like to surf fish, uh, Delaware's Oceanfront State Parks can sell you a permit that you can take your SUV and whatever you can put in it or on it right to the water. Now here's right. the thing. Nothing apparently new, right? they've had to step up the enforcement on this. Uh, because apparently what they can do now is if a ranger comes up on an ATV and sees you, you better have a pole in the water because he can tell you either start fishing or go home. Oh, really? Apparently, um, they've been coming up and finding people without a pole in the water and they say, oh, well, I just pulled it out. And they say, well, you better put it back in again because this is a fishing permit, not a surfing permit. Ah, apparently, people gotcha. have been going out surfing on that. Oh, okay. So or just hanging out at the beach do that. Yeah, you know, you can go down to Assateague in Maryland and, and get a um, over the sand vehicle permit and yeah. you can do whatever. Right. I mean, within limits, yeah. but I mean, yeah. you don't have to be fishing. We go there, there a lot. Right, yeah. but if you, if you get a fishing permit, you gotta fish. You gotta fish. <laughs> That's gotta it. Fish. That's it. Hey, uh, speaking of um, Sussex County, the Indian River School District Board of Education um, met and they have rejected the idea to change their mascot. There Apparently, is. somebody complained about 
Indian River, the word Indian being racist. <laughs> well, now this this has been the mascot since what, 67? 67, yeah. So, and, and what the Board of Education is saying is, you know what, this is the first time they've heard a complaint. One complaint is not going to prompt them to make a change. Of course, they're going to listen to it, but it's not going to prompt the change. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think we put that we question did. on Facebook to see what kind of response you had for that. We did, and because this is not the first time this has happened in, um, in sports, and Michelle said, I don't believe this was brought up by a Native American, and usually this type of thing isn't. My husband is part Cherokee, and he isn't offended. But then again, Native American people usually aren't the ones out there raising a fuss unless it's about something important like the deplorable living conditions on reservations. Pretty interesting. Jamie said, to me, that's ridiculous, just like taking God out of the Pledge of Allegiance. The names are not hurting anyone and have been around for many years. And from Pat, I'm glad they aren't taking Indian out of the school district name. What would come next? Someone petitioning to remove that word from Indian River <laughs> slash Bay? <laughs> it would be, yeah, okay. Um, now, you know, I, I've got Cherokee heritage to me and I, didn't I, know can, that. I can understand the sensitivity mm -hmm. to it, but I think sometimes it gets carried too far. Yeah. I think it is something of pride. It is it has to do with the Native American regional history. Yeah. It's a big, it's an important thing. They're not demeaning it. They're standing up for it as, as something to be rally behind. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Proud, be proud of. Now, what do you think of the Redskins? Because I know a lot of people say that's, uh, that's well, uh, insensitive. I, 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 again, I can see that, mm -hmm. but I don't think they're running the Redskins terminology into the ground as Redskins being a bad thing. Yeah. You cheer for the Redskins. Mm -hmm. You don't cheer against the Redskins, I guess, unless you're from Pittsburgh. Anyway. <laughs> um, I, I, no, I think unless you're from Dallas. Dallas is oh, really, really they don't like Redskins. bad thing there. Well, uh, uh, moving on to another hurdle to uh, constructing a new Bennett Middle School, heading up to Wicomico County, talking about schools. Um, another hurdle could be jumped this Thursday night. You know, we've been talking about the Bennett Middle School saga, if you will, for a very long time. Well, the Wicomico County uh, Council will hold a public hearing on Thursday night and they could possibly vote on whether to move forward with the Bennett Middle School project. I know that it's been a long time coming and some people saying we don't have the money. Uh, Rick Pollitt, who is the executive um, county executive mm -hmm. said in an article in the Daily Times this morning, all the pieces are in place and I have the sense that with the state's tremendous level of support, 96% funding, by the way, uh, nine, yeah, for eligible construction costs, the current interest rates and the need to provide jobs for the community, the timing will never be better. That, of course, from County Executive Rick Pollitt. So basically what he's saying is we need to do this now. We need to act on this. We need to, uh, every, the planets are aligned, so right. let's get this school built. May not be easy. No. But we need to get it done. Right, right. For the kids. For the kids. Just for the kids. For the kids. Yeah. Um, speaking of the kids, we did you know we got some New Yorkers on the peninsula? We do. Um, have you ever heard of the Fresh Air Fund? Oh, yeah. The When they come down from the city to exactly. live in the country. To find out what, what the, the rural life is all about. we got a group of New York City children that are in Lewis, Milford, Rehoboth Beach, Salisbury, Bridgeville to find out what it's like here. Um, free summer vacations. Um, it's a program that's carried on in 13 states from Virginia to Maine as well as Canada. And did you know, this fact astonished me, more than 1.7 million children have participated in the program. That's a huge number in and of itself, but did you know the program's been around since 1877? Wow. How about that? I didn't know that. That's an amazing program. So it's a wonderful thing. Can't wait to hear. <laughs> That's a cow. What do you do with a cow? You yeah. get milk out of it. No, you get milk out of the store. What do you do with a cow? <laughs> well, so. you know, and I've mentioned it before. We have a Spanish exchange student for the month. Yes. And we've been showing him what us Americans do, like canoe joust. And it's kind of interesting to see. <laughs> He's kind of like, oh. Okay, all right. No, really? America's fun. Yeah. I could just see him texting back to his friends back home in Spain saying, yeah, today my host family got on a canoe and tried to knock other people off. So, But no, it's all good. He's having a good time. Oh, the stories that must go back home. I know. What would you think, I mean, we've got reality shows all over the place. What would you think of a reality show based out of Ocean City? Yeah? Yeah. I would. yeah. You know as long as it's not Jersey Shore-esque. Oh. Ocean City Shore. Let me know. No, that's not what's happening. <laughs> Joe Crow Art owns Ocean Gallery on the boardwalk. You may have seen his yeah. story. What's happening is there's an independent producer who is pitching a reality show either to Discovery Channel or, well, actually, he's, he's doing it to both Discovery Channel and the History Channel, um, and talking about unique artwork. Okay. Now, exactly what angle or tack that would take, I'm not sure. 
but it's something that could happen. Apparently, they've been in discussion for a long time. Ah, so could that could be, be something interesting. That works out well. A very uh, subjective <laughs> yes. thing there. All right, real, real quickly, um, Wicomico County Public Library today um, unveiled a new poster series that they are uh, featuring some prominent Wicomico County personalities. Look who they think's prominent in Wicomico County. That's you. <laughs> That's you. Look at that. The series is called I Belong, and it's just basically uh, talking, uh, letting people know that, hey, we belong to the library. We like to go to the library, and it's a great place to be, so you should go too. And there are a lot of names that are associated yeah, with that program. Yeah, we talked about Rick Pollitt. He's one of right, them. Right. So, yeah, look for those posters I like starting. That. that was great. Today. Can we get one of those? Can we get one? I Can don't know. I don't know. I want to get one of those. You want one of those? We Hang it up on you. In here. <laughs> That's awesome. That's I don't know about that. <laughs> I like it. Still to come on Delmarva Life, we have introduced you to an Olympian um, who for three years lived with a secret why she is sharing her story of the trail by the person she trusted the most and how her story could help others. Plus, we shared the story of how Habitat for Humanity also helped others and we received several phone calls from you, our viewers, asking how to lend a hand. We'll tell you how you can build a home and help change a life. And it's time to figure out where Brian is on Delmarva. We're going to check in with him throughout the afternoon to see if we can get some clues to figure it all out. All right, get right to the clues, Brian. Where in the world or where on Delmarva are you? <laughs> it's not the world, just Delmarva. All right, let's get this started. Here we go. Clue number one. Listen up. The town I am in is ranked number three. That's all I'm gonna give you. Number three on a certain list. Maybe that helps, maybe it doesn't. You're watching Delmarva Life. We will be right back. Delmarva Life is brought to you by Sussex County Federal Credit Union, guiding you to your financial future. Peninsula Regional Medical Center, honored to serve the entire Delmarva Peninsula since 1897, and your local York and Mitsubishi dealers.